Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Every now and then a story comes along, a lot of people send it to me, and I look at it and go, mm, I don't know, I might need a little more, a little more. Well, a little more happened in a roundabout way. Gary and Jason both said, Steve, check out the update to the story. Now, I've never done this story yet. I was waiting to see if something else came along. A little twist, a little, a little something, a little something, something. And uh, it involves a, uh, a police stop. The police stop a vehicle. And they get the person out of the vehicle and put the person in the back of their car. And then a train comes along and hits the car that the person is in because the car was parked on the train tracks. Now, you wonder how someone in this day and age doesn't know how train tracks work. Have you not seen the movies where things like that happen? (laughs) So, I don't know. But the headline for the most recent story is from uh, Police One. It says, prior performance reviews deemed officer who left woman in car on train tracks incompetent. Incompetent. But we'll get to that story second after the one from the Denver Post with more details of the initial incident. Newly released video footage of a train slamming into a Platteville Police Department cruiser shows two officers searching a nearby pickup truck as the uh, train approaches and a third officer running for safety. He's, ru- he's running for safety just before the crash which seriously injured the woman in police custody who'd been left in the back of the vehicle. The woman was handcuffed in the back seat, and she was seriously injured when the train struck the patrol vehicle parked on railroad tracks near US 85 and Weld 38 north of Platteville. The wreck happened just after 7.30 in the evening on September 16th. The woman uh, is from Greeley. She's hospitalized with multiple injuries. She's expected to survive. Uh, that's the CBI speaking in a news release. No one else was injured, although it looks like the car may have been. A Platteville police officer stopped the woman after other police received a report about a road rage incident allegedly involving a weapon. So the woman pulled over just past the railroad tracks, and the Platteville police officer stopped behind her with his patrol car on the railroad tracks. Uh, Fort Lupton police body camera footage shows two Fort Lupton officers arriving to provide backup to the Platteville police officer. They get the woman out of her pickup truck, handcuff her, and put her in the back of the patrol car. That footage was obtained by the Denver Post through an open records request. The Platteville officer and one Lupton officer then search the pickup truck, uh, hoping to find other people or weapons. Now, that's the interesting thing here is that I know what pickup trucks are, and I'm wondering how long you got to search it to rule out the fact that there may or may not be other people in it. But the weapons, of course, it might take longer. It says they then discuss whether or not the woman might have tossed the weapon from her truck. A train's horn can be heard in the distance. It takes the two officers almost 10 seconds to realize it, however. So they're discussing the legal issue that they have before them. And a train sounds in the distance. Romantic sound of a train whistle off in the distance in the evening in Colorado. And neither of them recognize it as impending danger for 10 seconds. Now, whenever I'm critical of the police officers, there are one or two people who chime in who I suspect are police officers who say that I'm too rough on the cops. But you know something? Trains have a hard time stopping in short distances. They're very, very heavy things. And so if a train's coming down the tracks and they see something on the tracks ahead of them, that is the people on the train who are operating the train, they can try to stop the train, but they have a hard time doing so and quite often cannot, depending on what the distance is and how fast they're going and what they're carrying and so on and so forth. So the fact that they sounded the whistle or the horn indicates to me that there's a good chance that the train saw them and was trying to give them a heads up. But it takes the officers almost 10 seconds. By the way, this is officers plural. The two officers, neither of them realized for almost 10 seconds, like, oh, train horn. One officer screams an expletive as they realize a train is coming, and they turn toward the patrol car that has the woman inside of it. The other officer who is standing near the patrol vehicle with the woman inside of it turns back and forth a couple of times as the train approaches, and that's according to the police camera footage. He ultimately turns and runs for cover behind a Fort Lupton police car. So he runs away. 
The footage shows the train then slam into the Platteville vehicle, one of its passenger side doors still open, and pushes it several yards. The officers then immediately called for help. Get us medical emergency. The suspect in the vehicle is hit by the train. And notice the passive voice there. The suspect was in the vehicle that was hit by the train. The crash remains under investigation by three agencies. The Fort Lupton Police Department is investigating the original road rage incident. The Colorado State Patrol is investigating the crash between the train and the police car. And CBI is investigating how the woman sustained injuries while in police custody. I think we know how it happened. It's a question of why it happened that way. So back to the original story, a commander had recommended suspension and a demotion for the officers, uh, for the officer in the story due to his lack of care for his own safety and the safety of his officers. Uh, So Ashley Silver writes for Police One that reports are now surfacing that show the officer responsible for injuring a woman by leaving her in his patrol car while it was parked on train tracks was incompetent in previous police roles. Incompetent. That word is in quotes. Incompetent. The officer parked his police cruiser on the train tracks when he pulled over the victim in the case uh, during a road rage investigation back in September. She was placed in the car by an officer just before a train hit the car while the officers were searching her vehicle for a weapon and or other people. According to Nine News, discipline documents show a concerning performance history following that officer before this incident. The sergeant operates the lack of care for his own safety and the safety of his officers. An internal affairs report from the Federal Heights Police Department said, according to Nine News, uh, he appears to be incompetent and treats his officers harshly. Uh, In 2020, a Federal Heights Patrol commander recommended suspension and a demotion for him when he failed to adhere to a performance plan. And again, that's according to Nine News. And here's the thing. Notice it does not say how he treats other people. It says his own safety and the safety of other officers are are what he apparently endangers or ignores or is incompetent about. But as you can imagine in the hierarchy of life, if you are careless with the lives of your coworkers and careless with your own life, How are you, or your safety, whatever it might be, how careless or careful are you with just the people you interact with on a daily basis? Somebody you encounter during a traffic stop. Are you going to place them above or below how you treat your own safety or the safety of your coworkers? Uh, The Weld County District Attorney's Office is still reviewing the investigation and will determine if this man and others responding at the scene will face any charges as a result of what happened. So the woman was hospitalized. She'll survive. We don't know how extensive her injuries are. The story is widely covered. And it boils down to the fact that the police parked their car on train tracks. And again, you have the disregard for your own safety and the safety of your coworkers. And then, of course, you put someone else in that car in handcuffs. And then you go and go start doing something else. And then the train horn blows and it takes you 10 seconds to realize, oh, there's a problem here. And one of the cops runs away from the car because he doesn't want to get hurt, but he knows there's someone in the car. And I'm not saying that that cop who ran away could have gotten her out of the car. I'm not saying that. I'm merely pointing out facts. Those are the facts of the story. The story says one cop who realized what was happening turned around and ran away from the car that's about to get hit. Other two cops knew there was a woman in the car in handcuffs because they're the ones who put her there in handcuffs. And like I said, I remember watching so many movies when I was a little kid, black and white movies, westerns and so on. Train tracks are often a part of the plot. Things happen on train tracks. Trains go by. Cars park on the tracks. You can't get it started. Oh my gosh, that's that's trouble because now a train's a coming. (laughs) Always happens. So when the woman stops and there's train tracks here and your car is on the train tracks, You get on the old PA system and you say, excuse me, please pull forward. Please pull forward. And you get her to pull her car forward and then you park behind her with your car not on the tracks. Okay? So if they had simply parked the cruiser there and it got hit by a train with nobody in it, it's still a waste of resources because you have a police car getting wrecked. But the fact that there's somebody in the back of the car. By the way, when the police take somebody into custody, especially after handcuffing them. 
The police then become responsible for that person's safety. And so the fact that they took her and disabled her by putting her in handcuffs, in that sense, and closing the door on her. I know this one of the doors popped open on the collision, but they put her in the back of the car. They are now taking full responsibility for her and what becomes of her. And so this is the fault of the police officers without question. And by the way, you'll notice that this whole thing was supposedly involving a road rage incident. And they were looking for something they never found. So we'll see what happens. But the interesting thing is that the officer, one of the officers involved in this, was previously deemed incompetent by the force he was working with. And apparently he changed forces. We talked about that also, how often it is that police officers get in trouble at one place and they very quietly just transfer someplace else and start over. And so there appears to be a pattern of that as well. So stories from both the Denver Post and Police One. Ashley Silver wrote the latter and Noel Phillips wrote the first. Gary and Jason sent me those updates. Thank you very much. Questions or comments, put them below. Otherwise, talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. Failure is like free tuition.